go. And Jim is on your left. Kyle is on your right. This one could be a long one. But, you know, Jim, actually last round he was in the band company mirror, and he finished before our, our on-camera match finished. Yep. So, so there are a couple of differences here in the list. Um, there a full play set of Lampole Pacifist in Jim Davis's list versus two in Kyle's list. There are a couple copies of Thalia in the main deck of Jim's deck versus two main deck copies of Nissa and two main deck copies of Tireless Tracker. So a lot of the same elements, but uh, a couple of those, whatever you want to call them, flex slots or so forth, uh, they're a bit different between the two decks. What I'm going to find interesting is it's not, it's not this weekend. It's next weekend. People are going to be looking for the Mirror Breaker. Mm -hmm. How to get ahead in the mirror. Now, we've seen some players like Emma Handy employ Archangel Avison to great effect. Now, in Jim's list, I don't have that card. And Kyle's? One copy in the main. Okay. And that could play a huge role in things. We'll have to find out as Kyle has taken a long time on his second turn trying to figure out which route he is going to go. And this has to, you have to imagine, to do with the lands. Well, it's, it's the lands. And if he's aware that Thalia is in Jim's deck, then that makes these sequences even more complicated. It's a Lambhold Pacifist here for Kyle. The captain of Team Metagame Gurus will draw a card. Reflector Mage. Reflector Mage. It's going to be good against some three or four mana creature down the line, <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> Don't want to ruin the ending for you. <laughs> Just tuning in for the first time. Davis looks like he does have a copy of Thalia in hand as well. And you know, truthfully, maybe Thalia is the kind of card that could be a mirror breaker. Seems excellent on the play in the mirror. Sized the right way to attack, and very disruptive to the instant speed collected companies. Not to mention the lands. There is Thy Heretic Thar. 3-2 first striker. Creatures and non-basic lands your opponent controls. Not you, your opponent. They enter the battlefield tapped. It'll be turn number three here. for Kyle Bogamese. Lumbering Falls. I was already going to enter tapped, Jim. Thanks. That recruiter is going to end the battlefield tap. There we go. We'll head back Jim Davis's way. The nice thing here, and you mentioned this when we talked about it at the conclusion of the last round, the stats here on Thalia, 3-2 first strike. You can work your way through the pacifist and a whole bunch of other stuff. Reflector Mage, Sylvan Advocate before they hit six mana. Yeah. Spell Queller now. There are... Uh, a lot of creatures that are commonly played, particularly in the mirror match, where a three-power first striker lines up very, very well. And the tap effect, I mean, we, we laugh about the Dust Watch Recruiter. It cuts off a double block. Very true. It's immediately off the table now. And Davis will start by attacking with Athalia. Bogmies has no good block, so he's going to fall down to 17. Now, it actually looks like Jim has the other copy of Thalia in his hand, so let's call that a dead card. The rest of the stuff looks pretty good. At least one Reflector Mage, he's going to play it. Has to take one to cast it. We'll see which creature he wants to bounce. Pacifist is out of here. Yeah, I think it has to be the Pacifist because Davis trying to play a little bit of a tempo game here. Can't attack with the Reflector Mage next turn if the Lampole Pacifist is in play, so. You're familiar primarily with the SCG Tour. Uh, Davis, obviously, the defending player champion, more famous of the two, but Kyle, a lot of Grand Prix and Pro Tour success. I believe a runner-up finish in Pro Tour San Diego many moons ago. That is correct. Early, early, uh, early part of this decade. Yep. Very skilled player from the Michigan area. Uh, him being 9-1 is no accident. There's Tireless Tracker. He will get a clue from the Avamaya Coast. And that'll be his turn. So Davis will untap. He will draw a card to note. He draws a Duskwatch Recruiter. Some mana issues here for Jim. Yep, missing his fourth mana. But plenty of three mana spells to play. You can see a hand with another copy of Reflector Mage, a Spell Caller, a Bounding Crisis. Sometimes the band company mirror does grind down to a halt and it's the first person who can produce some sort of trump. But sometimes people just get beat up. Mm -hmm. You know, you, the, the creatures are very well sized. Some of them are very challenging to block. And uh, certainly with Thalia, uh, Jim does have a route here to play that kind of game. Here come the knuckleheads. Bakumi's going to fall down to 12.
Looks like Jim will take one yet again. Flood on the 18. It's another copy of Reflector Mage. See you later, Tireless Tracker. Let's go over to Kyle. I think Jim's preference there maybe was to sit on Spell Queller, but had to get the Tireless Tracker out of there. Also needed to cast a spell to prevent the Dust Watch Recruiter from flipping into a 3-3. That would allow Bogomis to more efficiently deploy his hand. Yeah. I think that might be the big one there, is the ability to stop Kyle from deploying a lot of threats in one yeah. turn. But fortunately, again, this is where Thalia is coming in, that lamp hole pacifist that would be able to shut down the two Reflector Mages instead can't do anything this turn. So Jim is able to get in a lot of damage as a result of the Salia, yeah. both because of the three-power first striker that it is on the surface, and then slowing down Bogomus' ability to block. Dramoka's command the draw here for Davis. We'll see if he can continue to work on limited resources here. The issue here is that if he casts something and Bogomus has Spell Queller, it's really bad. Mm -hmm. But he kind of has to cast something because if Bogomus gets to untap and simply flip his werewolves, now all of a sudden Jim can't attack anymore yeah. and Bogomus gets to deploy his handful of cards. So I think he is just kind of up against the wall here has to play around spell caller to the best of his ability, but there's only so much he can do because I think he has to cast something. Time for the beatdowns. I guess the alternative route is he could pass the turn here, hoping that Bogomus will take the opportunity to activate the Dust Watch Recruiter, and then there's a window to resolve your Dramokus Command or whatever else you're trying to do. But if Bogomus doesn't take the bait, then all of a sudden the werewolves are flipped and you're still up against the wall against spell caller. Well, there's an attack for seven. Bogum is down to five. Bogum is with a ton of cards in hand. We know that. Yep. Reflector Mage has been playing a role there. As has Thalia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very disruptive so far from Jim's side. And all Jim will do is pass. Not willing to play a creature in his main phase. But to note, again, Jim does have a card like Bonnie Crassus in his hand. He does have Dramoka's command, so he can certainly play at instant speed here. Yeah, I think I think Jim is really hoping this Dust Watch Recruiter gets activated, so he has a window to cast Dramoka's command. That counts as a spell for the turn, so the werewolves don't flip, and his spell does not get tagged by Spell Queller. Wow. It got it got activated. Okay. But these things are transforming right away. I thought that was the window that Jim was going to take. We'll we'll see what the setup is here. Okay. If he's trying to sit on his own Spell Queller, that makes some sense, but. Uh, my, my issue with this line of play on the surface is just Jim can't attack anymore, so he has to do something. That might have been the, the best window to resolve an impactful spell and not worry about spell caller. Take care of the lamp hole pacifist. Now the, the dust watch recruiter doesn't flip, and any creature that Bogomis plays this turn enters the battlefield tap because of Thalia. So mm -hmm. you might be able to get the last five points across the finish line. I'm worried now from, from Jim's side that that's become a lot more complicated. Well, it feels like to me he's got big plans for the Bounding Crassus. That's probably correct. Yeah. But the issue there is Spell Queller is going to be very good in that spot. Yep. There's a land. I mean, it looks like Kyle's just going to pass his turn back, so now it's time for Davis to make a move. What's the move going to be? Tough to say. Very awkward for your opponent who's been, been behind the whole game and now has minus one casting cost on his creature spells to play land number six and say go. See Davis's hand, he does have Bounding Crassus, Spell Queller in his hand. Looks like he's going to go with the Crassus. We'll see if this will resolve or not. It seems like Davis doesn't expect it to with where he's played it. Well, he'll move it up towards the middle a little bit. Collect a company. Reflector Mage is at least in there for Kyle Bogneys.
Bond with Crassus. Reflect on the edge. Reflector Mage, I think, is going to take care of Thalia. I'm sure Kyle would like to have at least a one-turn reprieve from Thalia so he can get his defenses set up here. And the nice thing, actually, about the Crassus here is that he can untap target creatures. So the Crassus untaps itself. Now he spell quellers to take care of the Bounding Crassus that Jim played. And now Jim will untap. Two spells will be played, so those werewolves will flip back down. But now Jim's hand is almost forced to cast a Thalia because if not, Kyle gets to just kind of do whatever he wants. And he's got no attacks this turn. This is this is my concern with the with passing up on that, that window to cast Remokas command. I think that because Bogamus has more mana, he was very likely to win a battle uh, over instance, assuming both players had all their mana available. I think Jim may have had a window last turn where he could have resolved something impactful and not have to worry about Spell Queller or Collected Company into XYZ messing up his plans. Now he's behind on the board, can't attack, and his hand is choked because he's missing, been missing land drops for so long. Yeah, is there any catching up to be done? That's the question. I mean, lands are obviously an issue here for Jim and his ability, or inability, I should say, to cast multiple spells per turn. But I don't know if he can catch up from being this far behind now. It's funny, Bogmis is only at five. Jim's trying to figure out how the heck can I cross the finish line. Well, you, you know, if you look at Jim's Dav Davis's list here, you look at the flex spots, the flex slots rather, not a whole lot to do with flying. You know, sometimes Archangel Avacyn can be your route to get out of spots like this, but uh, Jim's deck is primarily on the ground. He's only got his four copies of Spell Queller as flyers, and with Bogmis already having one of his own, that blocks one hypothetical one. Here's your Mocha's command. Put a counter on Reflective Mage. Take care of Spell Queller. Get your Bounding Crassus. You'll get a trigger from Bounding Crassus. It gets the opportunity to tap or untap something. Tap the Bounding Crassus. Come across with the Reflective Mage. That's a 3 4. Maybe. With this attack, if Jim makes it, you're going to get a pretty fast double block, I think. I think five. so, too. Kyle's got a pretty big edge in resources here. It's just an issue of not getting punked out of the game. There's your double block. I think you would see chump block before you, saw, before you see no blocks in yeah. this spot. See which creature Jim wants to kill. Going to take down the pacifist. Kind of shows just how good the pacifist is in a spot like this. Right. I, I, you know, I think Davis's only hope of winning the game at this point is to squeeze across the last five points, and that's going to be sizing on the battlefield. So even though Dustwatch Recruiter's got a much more impressive power, uh, Davis just needs to get the three threes off the battlefield. Bog means we'll start with the tireless tracker. A land will bring him a clue if he has one. He'll start by sacrificing the clue that he's got. So the tracker will get a counter. Bogomies will draw a card. He'll play a Prairie Stream. There's the battlefield untapped, of course, because of all the basics out there. And now Sylvan Advocate, which is a 4-5. Bogomies got himself a clue from the tracker, and now here comes the Bounding Crassus. An attack I like a lot. Yeah, with, uh, with the size that he has on the battlefield, even if Jim Davis untaps and plays a Reflector Mage, Davis still doesn't have profitable attacks. Mm -hmm. Once you're at that point, you can afford to send in something. I'm sure Bogomist would be thrilled to get a trade to just keep the battlefield clean. Uh, also, if Davis takes three, that's fine too. Yep. Back to Jim Davis we go. Lumbering Falls, the land he's drawn. The tough thing for Jim this day is he just, for, it, it, for Jim, this particular game, excuse me, is just his inability to fully capitalize on Thalia on turn three. 
there's that issue. And now going forward, because he's outmanned, uh, he's not going to be able to profitably spell Queller because it's going to be his whole turn to pass with the available mana. Kyle will be able to spell Queller and do other things. And Jim's behind right now, so he just has to cast things and hope it's not there. So Bogomis has, you know, what you would call, I guess, spell queller advantage at this stage. Mm -hmm. Dustwatch Recruiter is going to transform. Bogomis will draw a card. It's no longer about card advantage for Kyle because he's got that in spades. He's got a tracker going. He could actually Dustwatch Recruiter if he wants to. Now it's about kind of shoring up the holes to make sure he doesn't lose. And it's possible this is why, why Kyle thinks he has such an edge in the mirror. He's got too many copies of Tireless Tracker and too many copies of Nissa. These are really powerful threats for going long, which often the band company mirror comes down to. Uh, compare that to the Lamphole Pacifists and the Thalias. Jim is a little bit more beatdown oriented and looking to cement an edge early on in the game. The band company mirrors don't play like that very frequently. Sometimes they do, and we kind of almost saw a game like where that happened. But more often than not, it's about grinding down, accumulating cards, and, and beating someone with the leftovers. And Kyle's deck is almost pre-sideboarded in that respect with Tireless Tracker and Nissa in the main. Quick update for you. Apparently Tom Ross is pretty happy about what's going on with those band company decks. He wins again. He moves on to 10-1 now. He beat Devin Kepke last round in a backup feature match. Devin Kepke also playing Bant Company, so mm -hmm. Tom loves that matchup. And uh, I'm assuming at this point he hasn't lost to it this weekend. Here come the attackers. Bob and Crassus, Silver Advocate, which is a 4-5 with Vigilance, and the Crawlin' Horde, Howler. Nice. It's a tough one. Howler helps. That's a good name for something that reduces casting cost. Like he's summoning other yeah, yeah. members of the pack. That's okay. a good name. That, makes that sense. helps. That makes sense. Crowl and Horde, like who knows? I've never, yeah, I don't yeah. know who that is. <laughs> yeah. But Howler helps. That's a good name. Double block here from Davis. Looking to try to get this advocate off the battlefield. Bogmies will start by sacrificing a clue. Tracker will get a little bigger. Can't forget that one's attacking as well. All right, advocate's going to trade, take care of the Crassus. Reflection Mage will be left behind. Looks like Davis will take 11 in this exchange. He falls down to four. The follow-up here for Bogomies is another tireless tracker. Remember, on the discount here because of the Howler. Spell Queller is going to come down, take care of the tireless tracker. Davis falls down to three. Bogomi is with a land for the turn. You have Mayakos, gets him a clue. Advocate also on the discount from the Howler. Anything left to be done here? Kyle will just pass. Let's go to Jim as the transformation of the Dustwatch Recruiter will take place. Jim will draw a card. Sylvan Advocate. Just don't think he has enough life. Yep. He's going to concede the game. So Kyle Bogmies is going to win game number one here over Jim Davis. The Bant Company Mirror thus far goes to the player on the right. As we will look at each player's sideboard, we will start with Jim Davis, number 15 on our Player of the Year. Leaderboard with his two aerial volleys, a dispel, a summary dismissal, a Tamiel field researcher, a copy of Nis Vastwood Seer, along with three tireless trackers, two declaration in stone, two tragic arrogance, a big one in the mirror, and two negates. Yeah, that's the it's the setup for the games that go a little bit longer here. The negates, the copies of tragic arrogance, the tireless tracker, the Nissa, maybe the extra copy of Tamiel. He's got a lot of stuff to set up for a longer game here. Probably going to cut some of the less impactful cheap creatures. 
for Bogamese. He's got Nochtai's Command, a Declaration in Stone, a Void Grafter, three Negates, two more copies of Landhold Pacifist, another Tireless Tracker in the board. And now he's got his own Thalia, along with two Summary Dismissals and then three Aerial Volleys of his own. Not surprising that, that Bogamese has a lot less in the sideboard for this matchup than Jim because Bogamese is doing a lot of his work game one. Uh, I think you're going to see the additional copy of Tireless Tracker. I think the Negates are worth bringing in. Um, possibly the Thalia, but he's going to be sideboarding a lot lighter. Well, there you do see the options there for both players. Davis had a Thalia to start. It looked pretty good. He just was not able to fully capitalize on it, so we'll see how game number two goes. But while we wait, we will learn a little bit more about SCG Game Night, the very popular promotion which you can bring to your local store in a myriad of ways. And in the month of July, we got some awesome stuff. Again, go.starcygames.com slash game night for more information. Find the game night closest to you. Every month we come out with a new kit of pins and foils we send to the stores. Stores then run game night any day of the week, any format they want, just to get players in the store on a regular basis for some fun and friendly magic. The July kit is going on right now, the Snipcaster Mage. We've got a couple more coming down the pipeline here in August. We got, I forget the name exactly, there it is, Young Burrowmancer. And then in September we have bone chewer giant again go.starcygames.com slash game night find the game night closest to you and stores contact your starcy games in-store play representative if you are not signed up for game night get signed up as soon as possible old bone chewer yeah you know what that's a play off of uh bonar giant or bone chewer giant or something bonar giant you um, think that's a card could be probably not it's stone hewer giant what is that from lorwin block Actually, yes, it is. Yeah, that's why I don't know it. Yeah. <laughs> Old Stone Hughes. I took a little sabbatical during that time. Searches up a little equipment ski poos. You see these players shuffling very quick. So we will take this moment very quickly to learn a little bit more about Jim Davis, who will be on the play here, the 32-year-old, the captain of Team MetagameGurus.com, who is a DJ. He loves himself some hockey, and he won the 2015 SEG Players Championship. 11 open top eights, two wins, two invitational top eights, but really – and we've known Jim for a really long time. I think now, with how he has taken his approach to Magic, winning that player championship last year, forming this team, MGG has been dominant on the SCG Tour. Uh, this might be the best he's ever been. And I, I spoke to him in between rounds just now, and he was mentioning to me that uh, when the Players' Championship rolled around last year, he kind of had in his head that that might have been his last large event ever, that he was considering moving on to um, game design or just doing something else with his life. But um, the, the combination of the win at the Players' Championship plus the, the forming of the team and the amount of success that they've had, uh, he's more committed now than ever. Streams a lot. Usually when you're one foot out the door, that's when you get your big tournament finish. Oh, uh, that's what happens every time. Every time. It's almost weird. Mm -hmm. how it happens because there are so many stories of that. I, I, I have it happening myself personally. My last Pro Tour was supposed to be Pro Tour Kyoto. Mm -hmm. I didn't even touch for the tournament because I was just pretty over it. Right. And now here I am doing this. Jim on six cards right now. He'll keep. He'll scry. That's not a look of happiness. That looks... Like a tough scry. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, especially on the heels of game one where Jim got off to a great start and just didn't hit enough land drops to seal the deal. Mm -hmm. On six cards, looks like his hand is pretty land light by the looks of things. It looks like a reluctant keep. Here we go. It's plain to start. Bogmies will draw. Davis will draw. Picked up a forest. That's what he left on top. Okay, so his hand has three lands now and a collected company, but no blue mana. Got it. Well, no way you can scry to the bottom on two lands with a collected company. I you you got to so. keep a land that makes mana, even if it's not the one you are exactly looking for. Prairie Stream there for Bogmies. That's the land Jim Davis is looking for. He'll draw. Spell Queller. There's Canopy Vista. Let's go Kyle's way. Looks like he picked up a Dustwatch Recruiter for the turn. There's a forest. This. Oof. Oof. -a. Thalia. Give Jim a little taste of his own medicine. He drew a Lambhold Pacifist. He'll have to play that. Pass the turn back. Bogmies that, will draw. That is the one sideboarded copy of Thalia. Yeah. For reference. That's a brutal beating. There's a forest. It's a main phase collected company. Top six cards here for Kyle. 
he found a Nissa and a tire, tireless tracker, which means he's going to search for Forest. You can see Bogomis, both game one and, and post board, set up to play a very long card advantage, attrition sort of game. Seems like the right place to be in the mirror match. Remember, he's 5 0 in the mirror. I think on the cusp of going to 6 0 here. Yeah. Davis will draw. Dusquatch recruiter. And his opening hand looks like it had two collected companies in it. I mean, I, I don't think you can scry to the bottom. I don't think you can no, send it back. I think Jim's keep was correct. I believe the scry was correct. But this just happens sometimes. Yep. It's just cost of doing business. And Davis might be thinking no spell, transform my pacifist into a butcher. All Have right. a 4 4 on the battlefield. Try to represent something like Dramokas Command, but it looks like he's going to play Duskwatch Recruiter. Enters the battlefield tap, pass that turn back. Go over to Kyle Bogney, he'll draw a card. Yafamai coasts the draw. We know he has a forest in hand from Nyssa. He also has a copy of Prairie Stream in hand. He'll play a main phase collected company. Top six. Reflector Mage, Tireless Tracker. We're done here. I think so. We will play out the home stretch. And Kyle will play a land here in just a moment and get not one, but two clues from the Prairie Stream. Well, we are just about set as he's going to come across with these creatures. Attack for eight, Davis down to nine. What do you think? Prairie Stream off the top? Yeah, just yeah. for the full rub ins. Oh, Tamiya. Can't do anything with that one either. Jim will show the hand. And he'll be extending the other one in just a moment here. As Kyle Bogamy is going to win this match here over Jim Davis, two games to zero. The Bank Company Mirror goes to Kyle. That makes him 6-0 in the Bank Company Mirror this weekend. And that'll probably move him into first place of this tournament. It's pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, and you can see Jim and Kyle going over that hand in game number two there. With Jim debating on the scry. Uh, I think he's hit with collected company in hand and two lands. I don't think you can scry lands to the bottom. Uh, Kyle kind of gave a nod of agreement there. I think he's agreeing with Jim. Yeah, you leave that one on top and, you know, a percentage of the time doesn't break the right way, and this is one of those times. What can you do? Happens, you know? And listen, if you're 10-0 in a tournament, I 